We know that positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4, and we know that negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. So what times itself is negative 4? Mathematicians considered this an impossible problem since there isn't a real number squared that equals negative 4. But who likes the idea of something not being possible? Throughout the 16th to 18th centuries, a few mathematicians basically made up solutions to these problems. The mathematical community did not approve and made fun of these numbers, calling them fake, imaginary numbers. The name imaginary stuck even though today these numbers have real-world applications. We use the symbol i to represent the square root of negative 1. This i indicates that the number is an imaginary number. Today, let's see how to take the square roots of negative numbers. We know the square root of 16 is 4, because 4 squared is 16. But what squared would equal negative 16? We know it is not a positive number, because a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is also a positive. This reminds us that we need to think about more than just the set of real numbers we are going to also need imaginary numbers. We know that 16 is a perfect square and that 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. So let's rewrite the square root of negative 16 as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. We can simplify the square root of 16 and get 4. Now remember, i represents the square root of negative 1, so we can replace the square root of negative 1 with i. Now we have 4 times i, or just 4i. Let's look at another example, the square root of negative 20. Remember, when we think about simplifying square roots, we want to think of perfect square factors. In other words, when we think of two whole numbers that have a product of 20, we think of 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. We're going to use 4 times 5, since 4 is a perfect square. Now we can rewrite the square root of negative 20 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. Since 4 times 5 times negative 1 is negative 20, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 5 is the square root of 5, and the square root of negative 1 is i. Now we rewrite our answer as 2i square roots of 5. You might be wondering, why did we move the i to the front of the radical? Technically, both answers are correct, but we traditionally write the radical on the end to avoid confusion. Looking at the original response, 2 square roots of 5i, think about that being written by hand, or think about how that sounds when read aloud. Is the i supposed to be under the square root symbol? How far did that radical symbol extend? It is important that the i is not under the radical with the 5. So, to make that clear, we put the radical on the end and move the i. Written this way, it is obvious that the 2 and i are not in the radical, and the 5 is. So the square root of negative 20 is 2i square roots of 5. Let's look at one last example, the square root of negative 18. Think of two numbers that have a product of 18 where one of the two numbers is a perfect square. 2 times 9. Now, we also need a negative 1 since our radicand is negative 18. On this example, let's save some time by being more intentional with the order we write our factors. The square root of negative 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2. Notice we put the perfect square in the front, the negative 1 next, then the remaining factor last. This will help save us some work. The square root of 9 is 3, 
the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So our final answer is 3i square roots of 2. If we are purposeful of where we write our factors, then we don't have the need to rewrite our final answer. We can now simplify the square root of any integer using both the sets of real numbers and imaginary numbers.